Greetings, it's Eric Backer, naturopath from lovely New Zealand, author of Candida Crusher and formulator of the Candida range of dietary supplements. Thank you so much again for checking out this video. I'm not sure if I've completed a video on oregano or oregano, as you guys call it in the States, but I'm going to do this video anyway. So oregano is one of my favorite herbs uh, to use when it comes to digestive problems, gut dysfunction, yeast infection, SIBO, leaky gut, inflammatory bowel, irritable bowel, uh, any kind of a gut really related condition. I think it's one of the best herbs you can use. Uh, garlic and oregano are my two top favorites, along with, of course, with grapefruit seed extract. I just think they're wonderful. So if we look really traditionally at the historical use of oregano vulgar, oregano vulgar, I should say, the herb called oregano, the people in the Mediterranean uh, region have used this herb for thousands of years and they've used it alongside thyme, marjoram, basil and rosemary. So these herbs all have one thing in common. They all have very interesting effects on the digestive system and of course effects on other parts you know, of the body. But if we think back a long time ago, people never had refrigerators. So how would they store meat? How would they store lamb? Lamb is very popular in the Mediterranean. And um, if we look back, how they stored it is they would kill an animal and they would initially first consume, you know, uh, the digestive organs and the lungs and the heart and the liver and those sorts of things. And the animal would be skinned and the meat would be hung up, but they would use herbs often to preserve the meat because the meat has very powerful antimicrobial uh, properties about it. So herbs were used to keep meat from spoiling for quite a long period of time uh, and for flavor but one of the big reasons they used it is to stop the meat from going off and spoiling. And today we know that um, these foods, these herbs are wonderful addition to have to add to meat dishes like lamb and beef, you know, dishes, chicken dishes, they're really, really good. So I've been using oregano in cooking now probably for about 30 years. I think it's a wonderful herb to use. I grow different types of oregano. I grow really spicy hot ones. I grow mild ones. And I often will get the herb at its peak right in midsummer when it has a very high oil content you can smell it uh, just around flowering time usually just before flowering is when, when I pick it and then I will uh, just crush it in big bunches clean it and crush it up and put it in jars and fill it with olive oil and leave that I'll often also uh, grow lots of tomatoes and then dry them in my dehydrator I grow six different types of tomatoes dehydrate them and then put them in large jars packed with artichoke hearts garlic cloves, um, I get roasted uh, bell peppers or capsicums, roast those, put those in there as well, and then sprigs of oregano, sprigs of rosemary, thyme, uh, and then put calamata black olives in there, make large jars up, and then we will leave those for typically for three or four months, and uh, usually by midwinter they taste fantastic, because you've got all that wonderful herb and garlic and flavors of all of those Mediterranean foods coming into the oil very nice for uh, pizzas or tapas you know, or things like that that you're going to eat so but oregano contains uh, different types of uh, in, uh, nutrients in it uh, it has vitamin content mineral content and also chemicals are uh, called phenols so phenols have uh, is a particular property um, you know there are different types of phenols one's called thymol for example one's called cavacrol so cavacrol is very antimicrobial and some oreganos have got a low cavacrol content, others have got a very high cavacrol content. The cavacrol I tend to use in my content in my uh, oregano in my candida formula. My candida remove, for example, is a very high grade cavacrol from the Mediterranean. It's about 60 to 70 percent cavacrol, so it's quite potent. M many other brands will have a lower, um, you know, lower quantity of the cavacrol, which gives them a lower microbial uh, inhibition. So, and other um, uh, phenols like thymol, for example, tend to be immune boosting. So thymol is found a lot in thyme, for example. Thyme is a very nice herb, uh, which I tend to use a lot for people, especially with respiratory tract infections like coughs or sinus infections. Thyme is great for whooping cough, for example, or a cough that settles into the chest. Uh, oregano tends to be more antimicrobial with its phenol phenolic compounds. So I would tend to use it more for small intestinal bacterial issues. It's also shown in laboratory uh, use and through studies that oregano oil has a very wide-ranging antimicrobial action on parasites, 
on fungi, on bacteria, even viruses tend to be affected uh, by oregano. So it's certainly something that you want to have when you've got a yeast infection is oregano. You can take oregano oil on its own, but I really believe it works best in a compound product alongside garlic with a high allicin content uh, and, and also the, the, the fatty acids, the long chain fatty acids like underselenic acid and caprylic acid. So when you start putting these oils and fatty acids together, you tend to get a much more compound effect on a broad spectrum of multiple candida species. Many people I see have, can have anything from one to five different candida species in their gut. They can also have anyone up to two or three hundred different types of fungi in their gut and multiple parasites and different kinds of imbalanced bacteria. So we're taking a compound product, you're going to have a much, much better effect on wiping out a wide range of pathogens at the same time. And that's exactly why I created the Canzita Remove formula to contain all of these uh, ingredients in there. But make sure that oregano is included in your anti-candida um, regime. And also try and include oregano in your diet. Well, it's now March in New Zealand. We're going into fall or autumn. And pretty soon it'll be winter time. But for you guys in the States, Northern Hemisphere, you're going into spring. Wonderful. I was just recently in America and I really enjoyed uh, Canada watching all the leaves just coming into spring. So now's a good opportunity for you to go to your garden center and buy some oregano plants and plant them and grow some oregano for uh, summertime and get some nice big oregano bushes happening and use those in egg dishes, in meat dishes, in salads. So be sure to eat oregano in your diet regularly too. And while you're there, get a big pot, put a couple of thyme plants in there, maybe some basil and grow all these herbs. They're a wonderful antimicrobial addition uh, to your spring and summer uh, eating regime. And if you're like me, you want to have more year round, you do what I do. You preserve them in jars. You can get, grow large bunches, extract the goodness out of the, into the oil, and then use it in, in, uh, in salad dressings or cooking. Or you can, um, uh, you know what I mean? There's different ways you can, you can preserve them. But think about it. You can extend the life of these all year round by doing things like by drying them out or making your own powdered herbal sort of uh, products like I do for cooking uh, or the oil preservation. But either way, Make sure that you include oregano uh, into your diet in a supplement form and in an eating form if you've got any kind of gut problem. Don't forget to click on the link below for your free Candida report. It's quite a good uh, report that I've written for you. Uh, it's quite a nice um, way for you to learn all about the food you can and shouldn't be eating you know, when you've got a yeast infection. And also, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Thanks for tuning in.